Hey guys, how you guys doing? Today we're going to talk about Hello System. It is a free BSD distribution that is still under development, but it is progressing every day and promises to be a great Mac OS like system. Hello system is, as I said, under development still. So let's go ahead and take a look at their web page. Now you can find it at hellosystem.github.io. And this is where the documentation's at. This is where you download it from. All of it's done there. Now, as I said, getting started status. Hello is still currently being developed. It is not yet available for general use. So understand that this is definitely a beta release, but advanced users can try it out with the continuous builds of the pre-alpha ISO images that can be downloaded or that can be booted from DVD or USB, which is what I've done. I've did the USB ISO and I put it into my virtual machine and I've given it, uh, I think six gigs of Ram and no, four gigs of Ram and six cores of my processor. So uh, that's what I've done with it. Its system requirements are two gigs of a processor, two gigs of RAM, VGA compatible screen resolution, DVD or USB, and a non Macintosh hardware. This is what you're, when you go to the GitHub to the forward slash docs, this is what you're met with right here. This is basically, it's important because if you go here to, to this webpage, if you go here to the side on the left hand panel, you've got applications you've got everything that you need to know on how to use it and what you need to do with it right now as its state that it's in right now i imagine that as it gets developed and becomes a full-fledged release which i don't know and i haven't found a place where it's given any type type of timeline as to when that's going to happen but when it does do that and reach its full-fledged release state it'll be more polished more complete and everything will work right now there are parts as you'll see where it says under construction, and there are definitely parts that are still being tweaked around and, and taken care of and being built to, to kind of like polish it up and finish it off. So uh, just keep that in mind. This is, like I said, this is going to be a brief first look at it because it literally is just that. It is definitely a first look. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this right now. And um, I will tell you right now that it uses... Um, falcon as its default web browser so this is what you met with when you boot into the iso uh as you can tell i'm in the live iso right now what you install is exactly what's on the iso so it's not complete but it we can go through the install part of it to show you what kind of uh installer it's going to use uh, about this computer as you can tell it's in my in my um virtual machine uh it's hello system 0.7 uh, it's FreeBSD kernel 13.0. I believe they're at the 13.1, and it's using, you know, my processor, my memory of 6 gigs. So there's that, which I've already told you. So under system, it's just like Mac OS, actually. If you look at I mean, you type in here. Here's your search. I believe if you type in, yeah, like for Firefox or, you know, like, like if I type in FIR, say here's Firefox or for disk and it's using the FIR for first aid, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's got like a, like a, like a master search. Then you got a system tab. You got a file tab. You got an edit tab. You got a view tab. You got a go tab, which if you notice here, I believe you, if you do the windows key and you, which oh, they're not working. Yeah. Capital. So be you. Yeah. It's not working, but the shortcuts aren't there. I guess they haven't configured them, but those are going to be what they're going to be in the final version. Uh, so those are like shortcuts that, that are built into the system uh, for applications or the bookmarks. You can go to applications, which takes you to all your different applications. Uh, just like Mac where it, it's a folder, but if you open it, like say audio, then it gives you your applications that are within there. So that's kind of cool uh, for tools. You have, uh, you can open a terminal, you can find files and then under help, you can about, about filer, <clears throat> which is, Gives you the license and the authors of who has created all this stuff. So now let's take a look under system. Uh, you have under applications, you general applications, you have Featherpad and Lector and QPDF. 
under applications for 3D printing, it's got CAD, Prusa Slicer, and Ultimaker Cura, which I've never heard of. Under audio, you got Audacity, LMMS, uh, Muse Score, graphics, you got Blender, GIMP, Inkscape, Inkscape, Krita, Scribus, and Scanlight. For internet, you've got Chromium, Falcon, Firefox, and Thunderbird. Like I said, Falcon is their default one that automatically opens that they do have completely installed. These other ones, if you go to click on them, I believe it wants you to install it. See, so you can click on install it and it'll install it, but I'm not going to do that. Under Office, you've got LibreOffice installed, which you got to, if it's not completely compiled, then it you want to, it'll ask you to do this where you click yes, and it's going to start downloading it. And it'll start installing. See, it's coming from the rep repository. It's extracting the PKG. And then it's going to install the PKG. But I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can kill the... Uh... Well, we got to let it do what it's doing right now. So I'll go ahead and pause it and let it finish doing what it's doing. And then uh, I'll resume the video. Okay, well, it finished installing, but it sort of didn't install. I guess uh, that's part of what they're still working on. Uh, under uh, applications uh, for preferences, you have your boot environments, your desktop, fonts, keyboard, uh, mouse, printer settings, screen settings, which is uh, a render. So it's got a render installed. So you can click primary and it, oh, one thing that was really nice, it automatically detected my resolution for my screen. And so it set it right off the bat. So that was not something that I needed to worry about. So uh, uses a render that's installed, um, sharing, shortcut keys, which like I said, I don't think that they're completely implemented, sound users, and wireless networks where you can configure those. Now this is the part that's under construction. These are the ones that they have allotted that they are going to be working on getting implemented into the actual system build. Uh, that's probably what they're doing on the nightlies and all the different you know releases that are coming up so they're going to implement a battery uh uh system monitor system uh, system monitor for battery section uh the uh burn to disc which uh, unless they're you they're thinking people are going to put this on very very much older equipment there's really no need for that considering nobody really uses cds anymore uh first uh, disc first aid disc utility uh let's see if it, that opens up this application is in preview for developers. It's not fully functional yet. Okay. So, yeah, that's not in. Oh, wow. I guess it does work. So, this is basically for partitioning. And you can format. You can do uh, use it. It's, um, wow. Yeah, it's, there, it's not complete. But at any instance, it's still, like I said, it's under construction. So, uh, for display, uh, this should be where you can change your display settings, which... As I said, it should open up XRender failed. Uh, so it's having an issue with XRender. And so that's still working. So they're working on XRender for it. Uh, for downloading applications, this should be like a, uh, like a package manager or front end for it, which is exactly what it's doing. So if you do other, uh, you, can, you can put in the actual like URL for like a get. Um, for like a git uh, uh, clone or whatever it should be able to do that as well also these are pre-release builds so if they have any pre-release pre builds no sorry oh, let's go back here highlight hello system and these are ones that they've already got um, worked on right now like Thunderbird Firefox Chromium Firefox ESR and as you can see the Firefox ESR is in its 94 so it's it's a pretty much it's an older d version of firefox that it's wanting to install so they're like i said they're still beta so it's still under a lot of heavy construction uh you've they're going to do energy saving um that they're putting into it they're going to also allow you to install debian runtime more networking um configurations screen casting uh, simple browser uh, start disk and update if you click update I wonder if it works I I'm not gonna try it because it probably will won't work or it might be buggy but either way 
Uh, that's what's under the construction for utilities. You got the Android file transfer, calculator, calendar, create a live media, hardware probe, help, install free BSD, which we're going to do that in a minute as soon as we look over. Uh, what else is in here? Logs, Q terminal or QT terminal, uh, remote assistance, uh, Tassomata device manager, and zero config. Under video, it's got OBS Studio installed. I wonder. Let's click on it. See? Nope. It wants you to install it. So. Um, and then uh, Shotcut for your actual uh, video editing. So, like I said, this is made made for kind of creators. Uh, kind of what Mac is, you know, a lot of people do with Mac. They use it to create videos and stuff like that. So, it's kind of trying to emulate that. And so, so there's that. Now, let's go ahead and run this installer just to see what it looks like. So here it is, install FreeBSD. We're going to hit continue. Continue again. We're going to select the drive. It will erase the contents of the drive. Yes, we will. So it's using kind of a, a like almost like a like a Calamaris installer. And we're going to hit continue again. Uh, my full name. We're going to leave it there. We're going to put in a password. We're going to put in another password. We're going to leave that for the computer name, enable user to log in over network SSH. And we're going to click set the time zone on that. You're going to click yes. So we've got everything filled in. It's going to, it detected my correct time zone, even though I don't live in Los Angeles, but I am on the West Coast. So we're going to hit continue and it's going to do its thing. So we're going to let it do its thing. I'll pause the video and when it's done, I'll resume the video again. Okay, so it finished. That didn't take very long. It took maybe about four or five minutes, and then it popped up ready to restart. So let's go ahead and restart it and see what she does. And here you go. It's playing a nice thing where it's telling you all kinds of good stuff. So let's go ahead and click on the bottom here to skip past all that. And here we are. Uh, has been optimized to run as a desktop system on a real hardware. So, yeah, it does. It's not saying it may not play nicely with a virtual machine. So we're gonna click OK. Uh, click OK to continue. We're gonna click here. It's telling you all about the different shortcuts and stuff that it has installed. And there we go. Now we're into it. So let's see if this kind of works. Uh, for applications, we're going to hit the window, shift A. Yeah, no, it's not working. Uh, so the shortcuts still aren't in place. But anyway, it's the same as before. Over in your panel over here, you've got clipper, clipper clipboard's got your volume icon over here, where you could uh, turn the volume up and down. I've got your time and date. And then, of course, you got your other stuff that was we shown before. So, I mean, it's got all the stuff over here. It's got your start volume and your icons up here. I am not in the live CD, so I don't know why it's showing live there. Um, other than I can eject it. And it should be gone. Yep, it's gone. So this is really uh, what is interesting here. So let's see OBS Studio. Let's click yes. I'm going to type in our password, as you can see going to do its thing. I'm going to hit pause on the video and let it do its thing. And then when it's done, we'll uh, resume the video and try to open it up and see if it works. Oh, wait, never mind. It seems like it's going pretty fast. Let's just go and write it out. Figure it out together. Why not?
because these are up to date. Of course, they're up to date. It's checked to make sure that everything was up to date, and now it's doing God only knows. Maybe I will go ahead and pause it. Yeah, let's go ahead and pause it. Well, it did nothing. It just, like, hung there. I've been waiting about five minutes, and it's done nothing. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that out. And it is what it is. On this bottom dock here, you have your file manager, which lets you go to your folders, just like in Mac uh, OS. Then, of course, it's got your browser, which, like I said, is, uh, is Falcon, which we took a look at before. Just to show you. See, there it is. It opens up to nothing. No background. It hasn't been themed or anything like that yet, which I don't know that they will, but it's got feather pad for its text editor plain text editor uh for utilities it's got all these that are in here like your you know underfold you know your android file transfer your qt terminal logs all that good stuff and then these are your preferences which are all that you can find in your system over here and then of course it's got your trash can so anything that you've deleted can go there so and that is a look at uh, Hello System. Once again, like I said, it's still under development, major development. This is definitely beta phase. Uh, it promises to be a content creator driven version that is themed after Mac OS. So it's going to be pretty simple, pretty plain. Uh, and it should be rock solid. It's based off of free BSD, which I thought that was unique in and of itself. Uh, and I, I really think, you know, that it's going to be a pretty cool distribution out there to be looked at and to contend uh, once they get all the little bugs fixed and such. So either way, guys, if you have any thoughts or opinions on this, please don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. Greatly appreciate you guys for all that you guys do. Y'all stay safe and y'all keep on Linuxing and do what you do.